What's new this month at Rogers Railroad Junction? We are going big this holiday season as Atherne Genesis rolls out its much anticipated line of sound equipped big boy articulated steamers. Known worldwide as the biggest of the big, these 650 ton behemoths were the masters of the Wasatch Range throughout the 1940s and 50s. Stretching over 132 feet in length, their ground-shaking presence struck awe into all those privileged to witness their power firsthand. And with one unit, the number 4014, currently undergoing the initial stages of a multi-year restoration effort, thousands of rail enthusiasts the world over are now hoping to have that chance once again. Built by Atherne to feature lit number boards, a detailed cab, separately applied plumbing, a five-pole skewed motor with dual flywheels, and a Tsunami digital control system with available full-throated sound effects. And as an added bonus, the 4014 comes in your choice of either an as-built coal burner or soon-to-be rebuilt oil burner. A necessary capitulation to circumstance, seeing as the last surviving Union Pacific coaling tower came crashing down more than 40 years ago now. But enough of that old stuff. Genesis is also skipping a few generations on the UP family tree this month bringing us shiny and new with ES44 ACs courtesy of General Electric. Yes, now you can enjoy that famous new train smell with these gleaming diesels, the very latest from the GE catalog. Built with operating ditch lights, all appropriate antennas and communication arrays, silicon handrails, precision machined flywheels, and a detailed cab so accurate that it even includes the Operation Lifesaver spy camera for catching gate runners at grade crossings. Look, listen, live, and smile! Part of General Electric's Evolution Series family of locomotives, the ES44AC was built to comply with the federal government's stricter Tier 2 emissions control requirements. Boasting stronger, alternating current electrical systems than their DC counterparts, and a proportional traction control system, these locomotives are among the most popular in the GE catalog, with examples currently in operation on every Class 1 carrier in North America. So don't be left out. Grab yours now. And while you're at it, pick up a Plymouth WLG8 gasoline switcher from Broadway Limited as well. Built using die cast construction and a precision meshed low gear ratio, low speed performance and raw pulling power define this diminutive three axle roustabout, while a detailed cab, constant voltage directional lighting, and metal couplers keep the realism high and difficulties low. Commonly found around mines, mills, and other large-scale industrial sites, these deceptively powerful machines will fit well with almost any layout. And then there's old-time refrigerator cars from Roundhouse. Featuring knuckle couplers, metal wheels, and ultra-sharp decaling, these insulated purveyors of perishable produce kept America's agricultural markets humming from the dawn of the 20th century until the advent of mechanical refrigeration in the mid-1960s. Turning back to Atherne, we have several new arrivals this month from their industry-leading ready-to-roll line. Starting off, we've got three bay Trinity covered hoppers. Introduced by Trinity Industries in 1995 and intended primarily for bulk grain transport, these cars with their curved sides and center sill frames are often mistaken for American Car Foundry's center flow hoppers. With the structural rigidity provided by their semi-cylindrical shape, 
They feature lower tear weights and greater load capacities than older rib-sided cars of the Pullman Standard Company. And speaking of rib-side hoppers, 100-ton Pullman Standard cement hoppers are also available. Built by Pullman starting in the late 1940s and continuing into the 1950s, the PS2 formed the backbone of America's concrete construction logistics network, providing dependable transport of bulk cement and aggregates throughout the post-war building boom and well into the modern era. Following that, there's long, high-cube boxcars. Designed primarily for the transport of auto parts, versions of these cars are also equipped for hauling paper goods, major household appliances, and are widely favored by the canning industry as well. Known for their easy loading wide doors, extra high ceilings, and insulated walls, these cars are both robust and versatile, finding a home on almost every major railroad in North America. Then, because it's helpful to check your rear every now and then, wide vision cabooses are available. Identifiable by their enlarged cupola with its pronounced overhang, these cars were first introduced by the International Car Company in the early 1950s. For as the emergence of oversized cars in the immediate post-war years often obstructed crew visibility, a design with improved sight lines became necessary. Employed by almost every railroad in North America at one time or another, these ubiquitous sentinels of the rear guard are a perfect fit for almost any layout. Just don't go around telling people that their caboose is looking a little wide, okay? And finally, there's pulpwood flat cars. Identifiable by the distinctive wings that brace their bulkhead ends, these cars were built to carry bundles of the standard sized logs that feed the world's insatiable appetite for paper goods. With reinforced ends and stout frames, they boast tonnage capacities far in excess of most similarly sized freight cars. As part of the ready-to-roll line, all of the aforementioned cars feature knuckle couplers and metal wheels, wire form grab irons and handrails, etched metal roof walks, simulated fading and weather effects, and in many cases, the availability of multiple road numbers. And as long as we're on the subject of lumber and log hauling, we also have bulkhead flats of the Canadian Car and Foundry Company from the Walther's Proto Line. Favored by the forest industry as a conveyance for dimensional lumber and plywood sheeting, utility poles, rebar, structural steel, and pipe are also common payloads for these cars. And then there's tank cars in either 10,000, 14,000, or 16,000 gallon capacities. Capable of hauling everything from petrol chemicals to cooking oils, such cars are staples of the American rails, frequenting everything from Class 1 common carriers to regional short lines and industrial switching operations. As part of the Walther's Proto Series, these cars both feature such details as wire ladders and grab irons, full brake rigging and underbody detail, heavy die cast frames, photo etched metal walkways and platforms, contoured metal wheels, and Proto Max brand knuckle couplers. It's a step up from Walther's more basic mainline series, which is offering 50 foot boxcars this month. Previously released by Walther's, this updated version of the classic heavy hauler features thinner stirrups and additional door gussets for a more realistic look, as well as a specially produced series of never before released road numbers. In an era before the shipping container reigned supreme, cars such as this constituted the backbone of American commerce, carrying just about every type of bulk commodity and manufactured good imaginable. Entire trains of these cars, stretching unbroken for over a mile, were not an uncommon sight. But then, progress happened and, well, you know the rest. And speaking of progress, and those things that occasionally inhibit it, 60-foot beer box cars have just arrived from BLMA. Mm, beer. Custom built by the Santa Fe's Topeka shops back in 1974, these insulated cars were designed for shipping case goods in the wine and brewing industries. 
identifiable by the diagonal bracing on either side of their easy loading double doors. 300 of these enablers of inebriation were ultimately built, with many remaining in service even today, now mostly hauling bundled, corrugated, and paper recyclables. Features include chemically etched crossover platforms, wire grab irons, separately applied door latches and tracks, metal wheels, and KD brand couplers. Basically, everything you'd expect from the industry's most recent and up-and-coming model manufacturer. Oh, and they're also available in N-Scale as well. And finally, there's a new addition to our website as well. Now, thanks to the wonders of the internet, you can take a virtual tour of our store. Explore every shelf and niche as you cyber-browse your way through Northern California's largest selection of railroad hobby supplies and equipment. It's the complete Rogers experience. Well, except for the product demonstrations, of course. Those you still have to drop by in person for. But why not drop on by and see what else is new here at Rogers Railroad Junction today?